Yeah, Justin. Justin just got the sky wagon into Outlook. That's sick. Yeah, dude, now you're an actual bush pilot. No more lake beds and that crap. <laughs> I just have a hard time turning around, so I'm just gonna leave my plane right where it's at. Yeah, just leave it like that, we'll turn it around. Yeah, dude. I'm Trent Palmer. I fly drones for a living and bush planes for fun. Follow along as I journey off the beaten path of aviation. So how was it though? It was a little rocky and rolly, but uh, we made it in one piece. We're here. Get your blood pumping? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. I'd say it's the roughest spot I've landed in my airplane. I've been with you in some rougher spots, but for this thing, it was, it was uh, you know, I was bouncing along pretty good. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm stoked. <laughs> yeah. I'm proud of Justin, because he got this plane, I mean, hell, you've had it for a year. Two years. Two years, and it's always been on bush wheels, and he just, because he flies with the airlines, he doesn't end up home very often, so he's not, flying it as much as he should, it's a shame. And when he does, normally we're sticking to lake beds and roads and things like that. So this is the first real, I mean, you did one hilltop, but this is the first yeah, mountain top. This is the first mountain top, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, landed on mountains now. <laughs> All right, now that uh, Justin got his man card landing on top of Outlook, on the top of a mountain for the first time. <sighs> Gotta do it at some point. What's next? Bonham. Going to the hot springs. So, Justin and I just got out to Bonham Ranch Hot Springs. I thought this would be a good time to talk about something that a lot of you guys have asked, which is how did I get into flying? And actually, you guys probably didn't know this, but Justin was my flight instructor. No scary. <laughs> I don't know how we made it this far. <laughs> but um, I did actually start with a different friend of mine, Ryan. Um, I think he might have been on one of my vlogs, but the plane we were training in actually what broke the flap broke on it yeah. so then we ended up switching to one of justin's planes he had a, a piper cherokee and he's the one that got me into flying so the funny thing about how i got into flying is it wasn't something that i pursued out of passion i actually was forced by the faa and their drone regulations at the time to go out and get my private pilot license so when i started it I was a guy that was terrified of flying, hated flying, hated heights, all of it. I mean, a commercial airline, I was the guy that was like, sure, I was gonna die anytime there was turbulence. Deathly afraid. So when I approached my flight training, it was a job for me and I didn't enjoy it. Yeah, I was gonna say, out of all my students I've ever had, you were definitely the most timid right off the bat. Yeah. It was, I mean, we had to coax you in every time, and luckily you were self-motivated because your job was on the line. Otherwise, I don't think you would have got through it. I don't know that I would have either. So that's the funny thing. I think a lot of people hold themselves back because maybe they have a fear of flying or fear of heights or anything like that or fear that they can't do it. Well, I'm the guy that went out with total fears of everything, and it wasn't until I started uh, actually being in control of the plane that I started feeling comfortable, right? Yeah. I'd say right around like 20 hours. I mean, it was past solo, but at like 20 hours, once I realized, okay, I have this thing, if something were to go wrong, I'm the one in control, I can fix it. That was when I finally started getting comfortable. Well, and the funny thing for me is when we started going out, the first time we were taxiing, I was like, oh, he's a 40 hour private pilot for sure. And you were just totally opposite end of the spectrum, but you can always just tell when you're going out, it's just you give somebody something and then they do it, right? That's what makes someone teachable, so. Yeah. Oh, there's a freaking hawk up here. Check this out. <laughs> Justin's like, oh, that smells horrible. I'm like, it yeah. smells like sulfur. It smells like geothermal activity. It's not good. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> I'm going to pull up Matt Nelson. <laughs> Seriously. Hey, this is actually the cleanest I've ever seen this thing. You can see right through. And they extended that side. That wasn't open before. They must have cleaned all that out. I've never actually even touched it before, but it's warmer than I thought it was going to be. It's like the perfect temperature. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
so one of the funny things too is when I started flying, at least with my flight instruction, I had no intent of flying after I got my certificate. It was literally a means to an end. So I was doing it as quickly and as efficiently as possible. But I did take check ride right at 40 hours. And it was at that point that I realized, oh, hold on, I kind of like this. I'm, I'm gonna be done flying, what am I gonna do? I actually ended up renting back Justin's airplane to go take my wife for rides and friends for rides. And that's when I started thinking, wow, I should look for an airplane that's something that's a little bit more affordable for me to run and maybe a little bit more fun to fly. And that's where the kit box kind of appealed to me because it was cheap to operate and because the wings folded. I didn't know it was a, a really good backcountry performer. I just thought, hell, this thing looks like something I can afford to buy and afford to run. So that's why I ended up into the kit box. Actually, what Trent just said, he was lying. First, he wanted a Cherokee 6 or a 210 because once he realized he did like flying, he wanted something for his business. He wanted to get three guys around about, I don't know, 250, 300 pounds of gear. There is a little truth to that. At first, I definitely did um, want something that I could use for work. And then after thinking about it more, it was something that I'm like, do I really though? Is it something that I want to turn into more work? Is it something that I want to have a necessity to get somewhere? I mean, obviously anyone that flies knows get their itis kills people all the time. It's what pushes you to fly into conditions you shouldn't fly in, fly when you shouldn't fly, all that and flying for work with all my gear when I'm on a critical schedule, when I have to make it to LA regardless of the weather, that's just a recipe for, for danger to me. Yeah, I think you made a, a wise decision. So another thing I did to prepare for my flight training that I think helped a lot was I actually went and got Sporty's Learn to Fly Ground School app for my iPad. Do you think that helped? It no, it, like it, you, uh, maybe because you came in with this, you know, I have to do this for my job, but you were definitely the most prepared student I've had. So if, I've never had anybody else do the Sporty's course, but since you did it, I would recommend it to everybody. Yeah, it was, it's a really good course. Yeah, and when I, when I started my training, I was still traveling for work a ton, so I would end up uh, on flights, like long flights across the country. I would just jump on there. And this was before I even stepped into a cockpit. I had actually watched the entire video course all the way through. And then as we started training, I just watched it as it was relevant and went through it again. And I think there was parts that I was like teaching him regulations because I knew him so well from this video series. So you might be getting a little big for your britches, but. So what it does do when you do go out and get a course and you do come well prepared is it cuts down on the time that you have to spend with an instructor on the ground. It's like 300 bucks, which seems like a lot of money, but what do you charge as an instructor on the ground? It's like 60 bucks an hour, right? 60 bucks an hour. So that's yeah. five hours of instruction with an instructor. To me, to get 25 hours of, of, of video course as well as practice tests and all of that, totally worth it. And it's something that I even go back from time to time and just review uh, content to make sure I'm up to date on all my regs and all that, come like BFRs and everything like that. And there's not a chance I would be able to teach you that information in five hours anyway. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, definitely worth it. All right guys, so there you have it. That is the story of how I got into flying. You guys requested it, so I hope you guys liked it. I hope it wasn't too boring, but anyway, I think we're gonna get back to flying. Yeah. So Sorry for helping create this monster. My bad, guys. <laughs> A little bit of his fault. <laughs> anyway, you guys know the drill. Like this video, subscribe if you haven't. Cubby my wingman, we'll see you on the next one. Peace.